My goal is to share stories of bravery and moves that leaders, business owners, and CEOs are making every day. This is a one liter, five minute story. And with me, I have Greg Harris, the CEO of Quantum Workplace. So Greg, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you, Nicole. And so the question I have for you is, what is helping you be braver right now? Yeah, I think the, the, the bravery that if, to the extent that I'm being brave, uh, what I am doing in my, my mindset in, in this particular time where we're really dealing with three crises, we're not just a health crisis, not just the economic crisis, but we have a, a crisis of organizational change where the companies that are our customers, which are human resource leaders, are at the epicenter of the change that's happening, whether it's work from home or whether it's uh, organizing workplaces to, to, to schedule them for, for, for health challenges. We, I've known that as our 105 employees have gone to work from home, that I have to maintain visibility. I have to increase my listening across our entire organization. And so I think what's helping me be brave is the data that I'm collecting by maintaining that visibility, which means I'm communicating more. I'm actually asking to, to, to my, our, our team to communicate more. Maybe that's through the three poll surveys that we've done in the last 60 days across our entire company. Maybe it's the daily digest that I'm writing in Slack every single day, which, which is really almost a little diary. It's 100 to 500 words where I'm just sharing from my heart what I saw in the day, people I've talked to, the things that I've observed, which is a little bit vulnerable at times. It's, it, it keeps me disciplined because they're, they're able to see when I'm excited and hopeful about what the future looks. And also they're able to see and read through the frustration. If I, you know, something kicked us in the shin throughout that day, I'm usually talking about it. So it, the thought there is the more I'm increasing my communication, the more communication I'm pulling from our team, the smarter that we'll be about our customers, the more and the fewer surprises they will be one week in the future, one month in the future, one, one year in the future. So I'm finding confidence and I'm finding comfort even in listening better and probably disregarding some of those organizational protocols that you, that, that a traditional company might have, you know, instead of, uh, instead of listening to, to individual contributors through their manager or asking managers or team leaders what's going on in their team. I'm really just kind of poking and prodding at everybody the same way I might in a physical office by just asking somebody a question at the, at the water cooler. Oh, I love it. And I think uh, what I love also about what you're saying is you're the vulnerability piece, um, which I, you know, I've seen you in action in a variety of different ways. And I, and I do think I see a very authentic leader in you. And what I love about what you're doing, showing vulnerability in more of a written format is it's, it's, you're giving others permission to, to like, Hey, have all the feels with what's happening right now, right? Yeah. There's going to be days where we're feeling really good about it. And there's days where it's like, gosh, I'm just feeling a little defeated and I'm not understanding it or lack of control yeah. um, over the situation of what's happening. So, so I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you sharing that because I, bravery is just, it's an acquired behavior, right? And it, and it takes practice and you having to shift some of the moves that you make um, from inside your organization to a virtual platform to be successful um, takes a lot of work and a lot of intent as well. Yeah, and I think the goal is longer term that the better we are at communicating, both pulling insights from the, from our employees and the better we are at pushing our thinking, and the more of that, they, the more granularity they see through you know a day-by-day -day basis, the fewer surprises there are, you know, the the, the uh, uh, the more confidence there is that every decision that we make is a thoughtful decision and the fewer questions, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the more cohesive the team is in every decision that we, yeah. that we make. Nice. I love how you're talking about bringing them along with you, right? The, on this, uh, in the journey in a very different way. And so when you think about moving back into the office and things kind of, uh, is there anything that you'll for sure that you've been experimenting with that you're like, I will do this when I go back in the office because I've, it's really had a really positive impact that you may not have been doing before. Yeah, there are, I'm looking forward to, to doing some of the things that we've been doing, some of the face-to-face -face with the one-on-ones that we're doing. Um, 
one of the things we do monthly one-on-ones, manager to employee one-on-ones throughout our organization every month. And we've been doing that for years and years. Uh, those are usually lunch meetings. In fact, we call them good lunches, where good is an acronym for goals, obstacles, opportunities, decisions. It will be interesting to see, even in a physical world, when we're back face to face, whether we still do those as lunches, because we've found advantages. I've seen advantages to doing them virtually. Um, so, the I, I'm anxious to get back face to face. I think that there will. I, I'm probably even skeptical at some of the change thinkers that say this is going to accelerate you know full virtual forever and yeah i we want what what most people want is flexibility they don't really want all work from home and they don't really want all work from the office they don't want people looking over their shoulders saying i i showed up at 805 this morning i i i think for the most part one year two years from now whenever we whenever some of those external fears die down that we will be uh eager to to have the flexibility to be to work what you know, to be effective the way we want to be effective, where we want to be effective. Yeah, I it, it so well said how you're saying that. I couldn't agree more around the flexibility. The other thing um, that I just want to mention for those that are listening, Quant, Greg and the team at Quantum have done an incredible job of building a very unique culture. Um, so if you would be open to, and just give us a one minute, one and a half minute of, if we were to walk around, what would we expect uh, around the Quantum workplace? Because you do have a very unique culture. It's very intentional. And um, and I can imagine that the 105 are probably missing elements of that and what happens uh, in those four walls. Yeah, appreciate that, that question. We, culture at Quantum Workplace, we're in the business of measuring and, and helping managers drive culture. So we have to be really, if we're not serious about that ourselves, we got a real existential problem in our, our business. So I think at Quantum Workplace, we're in the middle of the Midwest, we're in the middle of the country. And so we have some of the the frills of the coastal tech scene, the ping pong tables and the and just artifacts of some of the fun that we have, revel at work is a and revel in work is a is a core value of ours. And that just that doesn't just mean dodgeballs and ping pong tables. For us, revel in work means we actually try to select people who truly enjoy the work that they're doing and see their career as an ex- extension of of the impact that they want to have in the world. And so, so, so we have some of those artifacts of fun and leisure and recreation in the workplace, but we also have where we are 104, 105 people of, of uh, broad interests and families. And, and, and so we're not a 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. culture where we, where, we, you know, some, on some of the coasts, you have some of those frills inside the office because you're really trying to keep everybody in the office all, all hours of the day. And that's not really our, our, our MO either. So you, you walk through our office, you're going to see our core values. You're going to see pursue. You're going to see people that really, you know, uh, really own their career and really want to operate in a way that are just gold. They're just go getters. And you're going to see team over self. You're going to see teams architected in a way where the success of the team trumps the success of any single individual contributor. And you're going to see what we call BU. We're going to you're going to see people's workstations decorated uh, with their photos of their family and making it their own and, uh, in bringing their whole selves and their diverse interests to, uh, to bear. Oh, I love it. Um, I appreciate you sharing the brave moves that, that you've been making, um, in your leadership role and, and sharing a little bit more about quantum as well. And so bravery plus leadership creates a competitive advantage, um, even if it takes small steps to get there. So thank you for sharing those today.